Today I thought I'd do a quick video on tips, tricks, and maintenance of uh, vintage amps, vintage Fender amps. Um, if you're ever, if you're going to delve into the world of vintage amps, my first recommendation is to have a uh, trustworthy amp tech that you can take your amp to to have it checked out. And when I mean Tr what I mean by trustworthy is somebody that's not going to tell you everything needs to be replaced and they strip it down and keep all the old vintage parts and sell them later on eBay. Uh, the guys that tell you, hey, nothing needs to be done, just keep it like it is and watch it. And if you hear something, you know, bring it back. Uh, somebody you can trust, a friend of yours. I made the mistake of buying all my amps and not having an amp tech friend. I didn't know anybody in the New Orleans area and still don't. So I was forced to learn everything on my own. I uh, luckily through eBay and trying to buy some vintage amps, I met a, a very nice uh, amp tech in Florida. I won't mention his name now. I may later because I, I have to check with him to make sure it's okay. But uh, Thank God for him because he helped me over the phone many, many times when I break out into a cold sweat. When you spend four, five, six thousand dollars on a vintage amp and all of a sudden it starts making crazy noises or crackling and popping or it doesn't come on at all, of course you're going to break out into a sweat if you don't know anybody to go take it to have it repaired. Uh, the, the one thing I, I do love about these amps, I've had all those things happen to me on all the amps. They don't ship very well. UPS, FedEx, they love to beat those things up. I think every amp I've gotten th through the mail has been damaged some way or you know, just had some loose connections or something. So I've had to repair just about every one of these amps. But what's so amazing about these amps is... If, like I said, if you baby them and, and give them a little love, I, mean, I know it sounds funny, but I swear I think they have souls. They uh, they come back strong, and I, mean, I got them all working on my own, and I haven't had any problems with them, knock on wood. I've gigged with them. I've taken them out. I've beat them up. I've rolled them down Bourbon Street on a cart, uh, which is not very good for a reverb unit. I found out the springs come loose. But... Uh, it's, uh, they are amazing. They seem to be self-repairing somehow. I don't know how they do it. But uh, I, I've called my amp tech buddy in Florida several times and said, I'm going to have to send this to you. I'm going to have to send it because I didn't know anybody here. And I would act I actually mailed the chassis of my Super Reverb to him. He couldn't find anything wrong with it. And when he sent it back, as soon as I turned it on, it still made the same noise. But it eventually went away. Uh, I'll explain to you that I found out that probably 99% of tube amp problems are, are all based or related to bad tubes, which is a good thing because they're easy, easy to replace. But I wanted to do a little advertising first. Uh, they didn't ask me to do this. I just think it's, it would be a benefit to all the tone freaks out there. If you are a tone freak, I, and I don't know how I found this, just searching around on eBay, but this is one of the best journals out there. Uh, hopefully Dave will give me a little discount on my subscription next year. David Wilson's the editor. He's a great guy. He's helped me a bunch too. Uh, but it, the journal's called Tone Quest, the Tone Quest Report, and they have uh, some distinguished uh, musicians on, on their board uh, anywhere from Anybody from Billy Gibbons to uh, Peter Frampton, uh, uh, Amp Techs, Amp Builders, uh, Stomp Box Builders, you name it. Um, a lot of the stuff in this room is due to what I've read in this magazine. I actually just ordered an Amp Preserver from, uh, I think it's Carl Hartman, which I'll explain to you. But it... All these amps were uh, designed around the old voltages in the old 50s and 60s. The tweeds are based off of 110 volts. The black face are 117. And if you look at any meter on your home now, they're all 120 plus. I've heard New York has what, 125 volts. So what this amp preserver does, which is in this month's uh, issue, 
it, you can drop your home voltage down or any voltage down by 6 volts or, or uh, 12 volts and it, it helps your amp run cooler, run at the, the specs it was designed for. Uh, they swear that the tone gets a lot richer and a lot less uh, harsh harmonics. So I'm, I'm anxious to see what that does to my amps. But uh, I got that out of this magazine. I now use handmade uh, Fender, uh, not Fender, handmade uh, German nickel classics. Best string I've ever had. Uh, they're made in Germany. They're not cheap. They're about $13 uh, set through uh, uh, Tone Man, I think, Don Butler out in California. He, he does a great job with supplying these strings. I use 11 through 48s. They're, these are round wound. Uh, the nickel classics are the ones I like because they're more like the old 50s, 60s strings. Let's see, what else? Uh, I'm going to pick up the camera and show you a couple other things, but uh, I, I'm trying to make this short, but I don't know if it's going to be short. Okay. One of the other tips I got from Tone Quest, Dave Wilson, uh, every time I have a question about gear or something, uh, amp switchers, I said, Dave, which is the best amp switcher? They said, just get the Fram Tone. They have one for two amps. This is called the Three Banger. And it actually, you can play four amps through this thing if you would like. Um, my main guitar player in my band, he, you know, we were both using two amps at one time. And he, he, well, he always gave me a hard time using two amps. So normally I use one amp. But if we ever hit a big stage, you're going to want two amps. If you ever watch any of the pros, they've always got two amps amps plus but this is a great probably one of the best amp switchers it's not cheap i think they're 379 without the cables it does a lot this is uh, my vintage uh, ts808 it's uh, a real one and it and it's all this is all i use uh, i try to keep it simple my rule is uh, the old kiss rule keep it simple stupid i think that's what leo did with his amps like I said, uh, the circuits on the on the basement are very simple when you look at the circuit board. And then when you, you turn around and look at the black face, he's added a tremolo circuit. He's added a reverb circuit. He's a added a, another separate channel. And the, most amp techs, to get more gain, will disable the tremolo, uh, take the tube out of the number one channel, and they tweak it to get it back to the simple circuit of the basement to get some of that tone back. So that's why I think keeping it simple is the best thing. I, I recommend, let me put this back up here. I recommend uh, if you want to see one of the coolest, uh, coolest performances in your life, with the most soul you'll ever see, go uh, on YouTube, search for Buddy Guy Folk Festival. You'll find it. It's The song is out of sight. It's in black and white. Watch that and tell me that isn't one of the coolest sounds you've ever heard. I, uh, it's a Strat through a basement. I'm almost positive he's using a basement. It was filmed in Germany. But when you watch that and you listen to what he's doing with just an amp and a guitar, It'll make you want to keep it simple, too. Um, I think I'm going to stop this video now. I'm going to have to do another part because they only let you go 10.